Let's talk about Studio Ghibli. It is so much more than just an animation studio. Studio Ghibli and its co-founder and most famous director, Hayao Miyazaki, are cultural icons. If you're from the West and your first taste of anime wasn't Pokemon, Dragon Ball, or Sailor Moon, then I would have to guess that it was probably a Ghibli film. After all, what in this world is more nostalgic than putting on Spirited Away or My Neighbor Totoro on a rainy afternoon with a piping hot bowl of instant ramen? Nothing I tells ya. Hayao Miyazaki has been dominating the anime film scene for the past four decades, and he's been working in animation for even longer than that. Gotta respect that work ethic. Although I firmly believe that he made a deal with the devil to grant himself immortality, anyone that has ever cared about animation knows that someone is eventually going to have to pick up where he left off once the man actually retires for good. A world without beautiful animation would be a very dull world. So the hardworking people here at Get in the Robot, myself included, have compiled a few possible contenders that could succeed at one highly challenging task. Following in the footsteps of Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. Now, I want to make one thing clear first. We are not by any means trying to say that Studio Ghibli is a studio that could be replaced, or that there will ever be a new Miyazaki, or even a new Takahata for that matter. Studio Ghibli's success really cannot be matched in any capacity. Not only do the numbers alone speak for themselves, but when someone mentions these films in conversation, you don't just think about one feature that makes Ghibli Ghibli. You think about everything. Fluid animation, masterful storytelling, fantastical worlds, delicious food, themes of environmentalism, feminism, and the downfalls of modern civilization civilization as we know it? Whew, that's a lot of ingredients for one single animated pizza pie. On top of that, Ghibli paved the way for tons of aspiring filmmakers. Hayao Miyazaki, Toshio Suzuki, and Isa Takahata formed Studio Ghibli in 1985 when anime wasn't really taken seriously as an art form. They named their animation house Studio Ghibli because Ghibli came from the Arabic term hot air blowing in from the Sahara Desert. It was also the name of an Italian warplane, pronounced as Ghibli, and since Miyazaki has always been passionate about aircraft, it just sort of made sense to give their studio this name. They wanted to blow new winds through the animation industry, and have their work showcase everything that they were passionate about. No single person can match the contribution that Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli made to animation in Japan. But what we're really trying to convey here is that the famous director and studio may have a possible spiritual successor in the future. There are several Japanese directors out there with enough clout to be considered for this list. Some whose films have themes and animation styles similar to Ghibli's, and some that differ. Quite a bit. Some directors have managed to prove themselves through awards and acolytes alone, even receiving Academy Award nominations, which honestly doesn't really mean anything because the Oscars are a sham, but hey, the recognition is nice. So, who are our nominees for the Best Studio Ghibli Future Successor? Adrian, would you please hand me the envelope? I don't have one. Well, that stinks. Starting out, our first nominee is Makoto Shinkai, who, according to his IMDb page, is a director, writer, producer, animator, editor, cinematographer, voice actor, manga artist, and graphic designer. That's a lot of jobs. How do I do that, sir? Famously nicknamed as the next Miyazaki, Shinkai has certainly shaken up the anime film industry with his record-breaking 2016 feature, Your Name. Your Name has been named as the highest grossing anime film, making over $358 million in box office sales worldwide and beating out several Studio Ghibli films, including Spirited Away. Before Your Name, Shinkai was certainly no stranger to the industry, creating gorgeous works like 2004's The Place Promised in Our Early Days, and 2007's 5 centimeters per second, which was given the nickname 5 wallpapers per second because of its beautiful backgrounds. There was also 2011's Children Who Chase Lost Voices, which made many viewers compare Shinkai to Miyazaki, and 2013's theatrical animation, The Garden of Words, which has a stunning food sequence that clearly pays homage to Ghibli's mouth-watering meals. The guy didn't even start out in film, he began his career making clips and doing graphic design for the video game company Falcom. With another highly anticipated movie, Weather with you set to release this year, Shinkai is certainly looking like a promising contender for the position of a Ghibli successor. Funny enough, Shinkai himself doesn't necessarily agree with all the critics that have dubbed him as the next Miyazaki. When asked about it in an interview, he says that Miyazaki is definitely an inspiration, and even name checks Castle in the Sky as a major influence in his work. However, he also states he's a genius, but you can't be Miyazaki. You can only be the second Miyazaki, and that isn't something to aim for. 
so modest. Although your name and Shinkai's other works have the beautiful fluid animation that mirrors that of Studio Ghibli, tonally the films are pretty different. Studio Ghibli films usually have a broad message to their narratives, and their fantasy elements are almost always the main drive of the story. Your name certainly has fantastical elements to it, like body swapping, among other things that I don't want to spoil, but the focus of the film is more about young love and the relationship between the two main characters, Mitsuha and Taki, than it is about, well, the other stuff I can't talk about because of spoilers. Despite all this, Shinkai is probably always going to be compared to Miyazaki. It's just sort of inevitable when most of your critics don't watch a lot of anime. Shinkai isn't the only director that has been compared to the likes of the Studio Ghibli Trailblazer, which brings us to our second nominee, Mamoru Hosoda. Director of numerous successful films, including The Girl Who Left Through Time, Wolf Children, and most recently, the Academy Award-nominated feature Mirai, Hosoda's work history is interesting, to say the least. After graduating from the Kanazawa College of Art, he applied to work at Studio Ghibli as he was inspired by Miyazaki's first film as a director, The Castle of Cagliostro. He didn't get the job, but Miyazaki himself actually sent him a personalized letter of rejection, which means he had to have at least been a little impressed. If I was Hosoda, I probably would have shot my pants right then and there. He ended up getting a job at Toy Animation, where he worked on episodes of Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, among other franchises. Hosoda's big break came along when he worked on and even co-directed a series of Digimon OVAs and films in the early 2000s. Digimon the movie was met with so much success, in fact, that Hosoda was immediately asked by Ghibli producer Toshio Suzuki to direct their upcoming feature, drumroll please, Howl's Moving Castle. Unfortunately, his time at Ghibli was short-lived, and he didn't direct the film due to creative differences. He did, however, return to Toy for a few more years until leaving to create The Girl Who Leapt Through Time at Madhouse in 2006, and eventually started his own animation house, Studio Chizu. So the man is doing pretty alright for himself, despite not actually directing Hal in the end. I think it really says something that Hosoda worked his way to founding his own studio, just as Miyazaki did back in 1985. Hosoda has probably had more consistent success in accolades than Makoto Shinkai, and is films follow more similar themes to that of Studio Ghibli's. The Boy and the Beast is a fantasy film about an unlikely duo from alternate universes, one of them being an anthropomorphic bear man dude. Summer Wars definitely feels like it has social commentary on our relationship with modern technology. I think we all know how Miyazaki feels about modern technology. Even Mirai uses time travel and magic in its more simplistic story. It's actually based off of Hosoda's two children, which is absolutely adorable. Hosoda, also like Miyazaki, highly values the beauty of traditional animation in an era where CGI and digital animation have become the standard. Mirai combines both hand-drawn art and CG animation, with 20 artists creating those beautiful hand-painted backgrounds. Although Hosoda isn't necessarily disheartened by the industry shift to digital, he has expressed disappointment about the dying trend of hand-drawn films. It would certainly be interesting to see how he handles this in future films. If he can somehow continue to implement traditional animation along with CG, then that would definitely make him a force to be reckoned with, as well as a potential Miyazaki successor. Moving along to our third nominee, this guy is another ex-Studio Ghibli creator, Hiromasa Yonobayashi, nicknamed Mato, which I'll be referring to him as for obvious reasons. <laughs> Mato also attended the Kanazawa College of Art and made his debut doing animation cleanup for Princess Mononoke in the late 90s. He continued to do key animation for Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, and Ponyo. In 2010, Mato had his directorial debut at Ghibli with The Secret World of Arietti, and then in 2015, he directed When Marnie Was There, another Academy Award nominee. Like most Studio Ghibli films, both of these featured young female protagonists developing unlikely friendships. And of course, they also involve magic, potential danger, and some of the most beautiful animated tears you'll ever see in your entire life. These motifs would follow Mato and his work even after his departure from Studio Ghibli in 2014 to establish Studio Ponok the following year. Oh look, another director to form his own studio. His first film with Studio Ponok, Mary and the Witch's Flower, really captures that signature Studio Ghibli charm. It's an adaptation of a children's fantasy novel, it has a self-sufficient young heroine, it transitions from a safe domestic setting to a larger, unfamiliar world, and it's a journey of self-discovery. I would say that checks off a healthy number of boxes. In fact, when Mato was first approached about the idea from producer Yoshiaki Nishimura, he was worried that Mary was a bit too much like a Studio Ghibli film. More specifically, Kiki's delivery service, since the titular character is also a young broom-riding witch with a feline familiar. In the end, it was a good thing that they went through with the movie, because it was received positively, and Mato got to showcase everything he learned at Studio Ghibli, while being able to add his own voice to it as well. It will definitely be exciting to see what Studio Ponok has in store for the future, and how 
their art style will evolve over the coming years. On to nominee number four. I should probably stop saying nominee, but hey, I just want to feel my red carpet fantasy for a bit. This contender is none other than Masaki Yuasa, known for his hits like The Night is Short, Walk On Girl, Devil Man Cry Baby, and Ping Pong the Animation. Best sports anime ever. Yuasa is probably the one guy in this list with the most unorthodox style, I suppose. I personally like to describe his animation style as wavy gravy because everything from the way his characters move to the way music is incorporated feels so psychedelic, almost the antithesis to a way a Studio Ghibli film works. This is why it comes to no surprise that one of his influences is 1968's iconic psychedelic trip, The Yellow Submarine one of my favorite movies ever. I'm not saying Yuasa should recreate the Nowhere Man sequence from Yellow Submarine, but that's actually totally what I'm saying. I would pay good money to see that. When Yuasa released his debut feature, Mind Game, in 2004, after working as an animator by trade for several years, it didn't break the box office, but it did attract a large audience overseas. It also beat out Howl's Moving Castle to win animation awards at both the Mainichi Film Awards and Japan Media Arts Festival. Most of his projects afterwards were television shows rather than films, but they maintain that same level of quality as his first film did, which isn't always an easy feat to do. His television portfolio extends outside of anime even. In 2014, he directed an episode of Adventure Time called Food Chain, which many people described as bizarre. When asked about his unique creative process in an interview, Yuasa said, the more I've done, the more I've come to understand with what you can express with images and with color. There are lots of different parts, scenery, sounds, music. I try to make everything link together in a natural way. These parts that he's discussed all come together so seamlessly in his 2018 film, The Night is Short, Walk On Girl. Watching the ways that he plays with color and shapes in that movie really make it feel like you're watching a painting come to life. It's honestly like nothing else I've ever seen before, which makes it so refreshing. The themes in his films are more outwardly adult than Ghibli films, maybe making Yuasa a better option to succeed Hideaki Anno or Satoshi Kon rather than Miyazaki. However, adult themes and imagery shouldn't make him any less qualified. And besides, that scene from Spirited Away where No Face Goes Berserk definitely gave hundreds of children nightmares. As well as some adults too. So. We've been discussing a lot of veterans in the industry who could possibly be the best successor to Studio Ghibli. What about some of the younger up-and-coming directors to look out for? There have been a lot of really impressive anime films coming out recently that are directed by people making their debut into anime movie making. Naoko Yamada is a young director with a lot of promise. She works at Kyoto Animation and is responsible for anime like k and Tamako Market. Her film, A Silent Voice, made every staff member getting the robot cry their eyes out, myself included but probably not as much as Adrian. The movie may not have any magic or even magical realism in it, but it did have an opening sequence that played to the Who's My Generation, so that's pretty iconic if you ask me. I've yet to see Liz and the Bluebird, but I know that that movie has fairy tale elements in it, and you can bet your bottom dollar that I'll support all the work of an awesome female filmmaker as a female who wants to be a filmmaker. Hiroyasu Ishida is another up-and-comer at only 30 years old, and he's already directed his first feature-length film, Penguin Highway. Adapted from Tomihiko Morimi's novel of the same name, it's a coming-of-age film about a precocious young boy who's determined to find out why a bunch of penguins are showing up in his peaceful countryside town. It's a beautiful film, and I kind of forgot halfway through that I wasn't actually watching a Studio Ghibli film, because all the magic is there. Expressive animals, sassy women, and everything. Studio Ghibli is for ever immortalized in anime culture, as well as in cinema culture. The work of Hayao Miyazaki has taken us on some of the most wild adventures of our lifetime, and given us some of our most beloved characters. However, it's about high time that other directors and studios get the spotlight that they so deserve. Because who knows? Studio Ghibli probably won't last forever, and someone is going to have to satisfy our cravings for outstanding, unforgettable anime film experiences. And the best part is, now it's so much easier to watch smaller anime films leak because distributors like Eleven Arts, G Kids, and Funimation Films are bringing great anime movies to Western audiences. So get to your local theater, or, you know, streaming app, and support these great filmmakers. I'm Dory, and thank you for watching Get in the Robot, made in New York City, because we can't move to Japan. However, a lot of these films I just mentioned do come to New York, so if you're in the area and want to watch them with us, let us know.